Hello everybody, this is Thomas Ott for NeuralMarketTrends.com and welcome to another video on how to use RapidMiner Server. In this particular video, we're going to show you how you can take a RapidMiner Studio process, save it to the server, and actually put it into production. Now what makes this a little bit more interesting is we're going to be using a job agent and the process uses Python. So I'm going to show you a little bit on how you can configure the RapidMiner server so that you can use Python and use Python in one of the job agents. All right, so why don't we begin? Let's switch over to RapidMiner Studio. RapidMiner Studio, I have a very simple, simple process here. All it does is take some information from another process, which we'll move over here, and then it parses my blog feed takes a random sample of the blog feed, does some more ETL, and then it executes a Python script to automatically post it to Twitter. Sounds pretty cool, right? So let's just take a look at what that Twitter code looks like very simply. I'm not going to show you this one because it has all my keys in it, my developer keys from Twitter, so uh, I don't want you to be posting on in my account, but I do have a copy, a dummy one right here we can take a look at real quick. Let's pop open the edit text. You can see here it's very simple. You import all your files and so forth. You define your function, and here's where my keys are. And all it does is it just takes, it creates a status um, using three macros, the actual tweet from my blog or from the link from my blog, the link, and a hashtag. Okay, very, very simple. So this is the process that I've built in RapidMiner Studio. I've tested it. It works. Now I want to put it on the server. How do I do that? First step you have to make sure that you do have a server up and running. And we talked a little bit about that in my last video, how to configure one and set it up. But once you have it up and running, you need to make a connection from your RapidMiner Studio to it. It's very simple. You just come down here, you create a new repository, and in this case, instead of making it local on your machine, you click on New RapidMiner Server Repository. Click Next. You fill it all out. You give the URL, in my case, it was a localhost 8080 on port 8080, and then user password. In this case, I was admin and my password. And what happens is after you're done here, you can check the connection status. So let's just do that as a quick test, okay? I'm gonna type in my, my login name. You would wanna click on remember password. We're just gonna test it here to show you. And boom, if you get a little red X, it means you haven't done something right or you don't have permissions. So it's very, very simple. Okay, then all you need to do is you just need to go ahead and you need to save this. You come down, you go to save as, scroll down. Now you actually have the repository here and you save it in the directory where you want. In this case, I have a couple, I have a project directory, I have a Twitter uh, subdirectory, and I have a bunch of uh, processes over here that do a bunch of stuff for me on a daily basis. And it's that simple. So now it reserves and sits on the server, okay? So how do you go ahead and actually then put this into production? It's already sitting on the server, and you can cron job it, right? So you can come over here and you can say, well, I want to schedule this task. In this case, I want to come here and I pull this down and I go schedule process on server. And what pops up is a very neat little um, cron job editor here. Uh, you see where you want to run the process. If you have multiple servers, you can do it here. Uh, the name of the process and the execution queue. And we'll go into that in just a second. This is incredibly important. Uh, in this case, you want to say, I want to do it on the NMT um, job agent. Uh, I created a separate one specifically for all my blog related duties, whether it's parsing for Twitter or anything to do with my blog, I have a separate execution queue for it. And then you can do it now, you can do it once, you could do it a cron schedule over here by editing and so forth. And it's very, very, very simple. So, but before you actually execute Python or even R scripts or any other type of language um, that's not necessarily uh, native uh, to RapidMiner Studio, you need to make some configuration changes on the back end of the server. It's not hard to do. Okay, let's switch over to the interface of RapidMiner Server, the web interface. Let's come here. So we have this. You're familiar with this by now. Let's log in and we navigate to administration. Now, you come down over here and you go to system settings. 
And here's where you can begin to make some specific changes. You can create your own properties and your own values. And if you're using rapid, if you're using Python, especially in Rapid Miner or R, you would need to add a Rapid Miner Python uh, Rapid Miner dot Python underscore scripting dot path, and then give it the actual path value. In this case, I have several environments of Anaconda Python running, so I want to defer to the Python 3.5 uh, environment and select the Python exe. If you're using R, I think the property is Rapid Miner dot R underscore scripting that path, and then you would also then have to default it to where your R script uh, execution engine is. Now, I'm running everything locally on my hard drive, so these values are related to my hard drive. This is where I have Python installed on my hard drive. If you're running a server on a true server box somewhere, uh, maybe a Linux one, it could be in a different path and directory and so forth. That is something you're going to have to ask your administrator or the administrator for the server uh, would do this automatically. Pretty straightforward. Now, we have one more important, important thing to do to get this to work with the job agent. Now the job agents, as I alluded to before in the last in the video, they're s little Java containers that caps encapsulate your process and run them. If something goes wrong with your process, it can tear down the job agent, but it won't tear down the server. This is one of the big configuration changes that Rapid Miner did to the server to really begin to make it a very robust enterprise ready type of server. They sketch, they changed these things where you can now compartmentalize different processes from different queues into job agents and you can move those job agents anywhere. They don't need to be on the server box. In fact, if you have a small job agent of maybe 500 megabytes, you can probably even run it on a Raspberry Pi. And that's going to be one of my little fun projects in the future, hopefully, to do a small job agent on a Raspberry Pi. But let's get back to the actual job container. Okay, now in my case, and I'm going to switch over to my Windows Explorer here. In my case, I have all my job agents uh, stored in my C directory under a subdirectory called job agents and here's where I named it MMT for neural market trends and what I did was there's a couple different way, couple different things on how to get the job agent started number one in the bin folder you can start and stop a job agent very very handy so normally when my rapid miner spins up I can either put this in a cron job and spin up the rapid miner job agent I can even have a cron job to spin it down if I need to but this is where you kick it off and this is where you stop the job agents. The next most important part is the configuration folder. And here's where you make changes to how big or how many containers or how many threads and so forth that your job agent will be using. So if you come here, the very first uh, file that you see under config is config properties. And if I open this using Sublime Text, you could see here that it has some information in it. A job agent name, which will show up in the queues, um, the actual request name, some secret authorization, uh, server protocols, and so forth, how many containers, and the actual container size. In this case, I allocated one, gigas one gigabyte. Okay? Very, very simple stuff. A lot of this is that you can change this on the fly. But the more important one to get Python to work in a job container is the other configuration property and let's go back to the um, config folder it's in under the container subfolder so go to container click on container properties hit open and here it is here is where you can actually then configure the number of threads and here's where you would actually put in that same value we just put into the rapid miner server you would put in rapidminer.python underscore scripting dot path and equal to the same value that you had before. This is where you would put in the same thing for R, rapidminer.r underscore scripting dot path and the R value, the location of the R script. Once you have all that, you need to stop the agent okay, and restart it. And it's that simple. Once you have that available, now let's go back to rapidminer studio. Okay. And we're going to kick off this job. We're going to kick it off on the server, and then we're going to switch back to the server execution pane. Actually, let's go do that now. Let's go do that now so that we can switch over quickly and see it running. So I'm going to go to process. Then I'm going to go to executions. And here I have my handy dandy list of things that have worked and have crashed. Okay, so the last execution was July 31st uh, at 
2 a.m. or two minutes past um, a.m. And now um, let's go to the uh, Rapid Miner Studio. Come over here, pull down the menu, run this process on the server, All right? And here, which execution queue do we want to run it on? NMT. Hit run now. And let's switch back over. And you can see here that it's beginning to run. And hopefully in about mm, 26 seconds, 30 seconds or so, it should complete correctly. There, it has completed. You can see here that it started at 5.53 this morning completed at 553 I'm sorry 554 after running for 49 seconds so it did it very well it executed everything there are no errors so my Python worked it worked in my NMT job agent and the process is now saved on the rapid miner server so that's simple so now you can take your studio processes make a connection to rapid miner server pretty straightforward save it to some folder or some directory where you need to put it in then configure the job agents if you're running Python or R, and then put it into production by hitting run. It's that simple. This is Thomas Ott for NeuralMarketTrends.com. Thank you so much for watching. I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the link, dropping me a comment, and or just even saying hello on my blog on NeuralMarketTrends.com. Thanks so much for watching, and look forward to the next video. Bye.